Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Today is January 1st, 2022. Happy New Year to you and your family. I hope you had a wonderful time ringing in the new year. I know we did. We were at a friend's house, and while there, we watched some football, ate some food and some snacks, and then we watched the ball drop. It's always fun. And last night, John said he wants to go to Times Square next year, so who knows? Maybe we will see if that happens. Anyway, for today, I figured another New Year's story would be okay to do. So today we read the story, The New Year's Bell, written by Andrea Hoffer Proudfoot, and comes to us from the book, The Pearl Storybook. As we begin this new year, I hope a goal of yours is to read more. For me, I just tallied up my total from last year, and I got through 36 books, of which about 20% of the books were read, the rest were audiobooks. If you need some recommendations, use my list, or you can contact me and I can give you some recommendations. Then again, you might not like what I like, so maybe talk to your librarian. Either way, let's read some more books. Now. Let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The New Year's Bell A ring, a ring, ring A ring, a ring, ring Brother Carl, wake up! Wake up! Don't you hear the great bell? Father is ringing the New Year in. Don't you hear it, little Carl? Wake up! Tangle-haired little Carl sat up in bed, rubbed his eyes, and after a few winks, opened them wide. Is it the wind, Brother Hans, that sings so? No, no, it is the great bell. Don't you hear it ring? It is ringing for the new year. Is father drawing the rope? asked the little one. Of course he is, little Carl. He is waking up the whole world that everyone may wish a happy new year. Come, let us go to the window. And the two little fellows crept out of their warm nest onto the cold floor, and over to the window in the gable. Oh, see, there is Father's lantern in the steeple window, cried Carl. It threw its light into the frosty night, the clear stars cut sharp holes in the sky, and the air was so cold it made everything glisten. A ring, a ring, ring, clanged the great bell, and little Hans and Carl knew their father's arms were making it ring. The strokes were so strong that each one made little half-asleep Carl wink, and the stars seemed to wink back to him each time. He crept closer to Hans, and the two stood still with their arms around each other. The room was quite cold, but they did not mind it, for with each stroke, the great bell seemed to ring more beautifully. It seemed so near them, as if ringing right in their ears, and the two little boys stood and listened with beating hearts. I saw dear father trim his lantern, whispered Hans. He set it near the door before we went to bed, all ready to light when the clock struck twelve. Mother said to him as he put the lantern there, Ring the bell good and strong, dear father, for who knows but this year may bring the great blessing which the Christ child promised. We must watch for it, little Carl. 
and the old bell seemed to speak louder and clearer to the little ones as they eagerly listened for what it was telling. Father says the bell will never ring from the old tower again, for the new one is being built, said Hans. And what do you think, brother Carl? Our dear mother wept because the old steeple must be broken down, and the dear bell that is even now a ringing must be put into another great tower to ring. Does the great bell know it, brother? No, dear little Carl. But no matter where it is put, it will always ring, and be glad to wake the village for the new year. Will we go and say goodbye to the dear old bell, brother Hans? whispered little Carl. Yes, brother mine. When it is day, we will go, for it has rung so many times for us. They crept out of the cold into their snug bed again, and the great strokes poured from the tower window long after the little curly heads were full of dreams. Wake up, brother Hans, there is the sun. This time, little Carl was the first to arise. Quickly, they were both dressed, and opening their door noiselessly, they went down the narrow stairs on tiptoe, and then out into the open air. A swift wind was blowing. It swept over the bare bushes and whirled the snow into the children's faces and filled their curly hair with flakes. But the sun was smiling down on them and said, See what a beautiful day I brought for a New Year's gift to you. And the little ones passed through the church door that was always open and into the belfry tower. They knew the way, for Father had so often taken them with him. They came to the long dark ladder way, but they did not mind the dark, for they knew the bell was at the top, and they bravely began to climb. Hans had wooden shoes, so he left them at the foot of the ladder. It was so much easier to climb a ladder with bare feet. Besides, he hardly felt the cold, he was such a quick and lively little boy. Carl went ahead, that brother Hans might the more easily help him. They climbed up and up, and the brave big brother talked merrily all the time to keep little Carl from thinking of the long, long way. Up and up they went, it became darker and darker, Little Carl led on and on, and he was glad that Hans was behind him. All at once, a bright gleam of light greeted them from above, and they knew that soon they would be with a dear old bell. Through the opening they crept, and there the great bell hung, and they stood beneath it. Hans could just touch it, and he felt its long tongue, and saw the shining marks on its sides where it had struck and clanging for many, many years. It was very cold in the belfry. Little Carl tucked his hands under his blouse and gazed at the bell, while Hans explained to him what made the music and the great tolling tones that came from it. The whole world loves the great bell, brother Carl, said Hans. Mother thinks that last night it rang in the great blessing which the Christ child had promised. What did the little Christ child promise, brother? Don't you remember, little Carl? Mother told us that the Christ child would send little children a beautiful gift. I think it must be the new year that he has sent, for that is what the old bell brought to us last night. And Hans lifted little Carl, and he kissed the beautiful bell on its great round lip, and the bell was still warm from its long ringing. And they stood and looked at the bell quietly for a long time, and then they said, Goodbye, dear great bell, and they went down the dark ladder again. Hans put on his wooden shoes at the foot of the ladder, and with flying feet, 
they crossed the church garden, and there stood the dear mother in the door looking for them. She had found their little empty bed and was just starting out to find them. Dear mother, we have been in the tower to thank the great bell for bringing the new year, cried Hans. Did the Christ child send it, mother? asked little Carl. The mother stooped and put her arms about them and kissed them both. As she led them into the room, she said, Yes, my little ones, the Christ child sends the new year. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com or you can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage, and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history. And it's come to a final stop.